Howdy boys and girls, welcome back. This is Mr. Herring. We are continuing our fifth grade social studies unit on U.S. geography. I will be your wonderful tour guide again today through this journey. <clears throat> for my virtual learners, uh, this slide was for my on-site students who came in and got started on bell work. For you guys, we're just going to jump ahead and get started. We are continuing with all about maps. We're still learning about maps. We've talked about compass rows. We've talked about map scales. Now we're going to uh, focus on grids today. So U.S. geography, parts of a map using a grid. My essential question is, what is a grid and how is it used on a map? So then today I will learn what a grid is and how we use a grid to find locations on a map. It's important to know that grids go hand in hand with latitude and longitude. We learn about grids now so that later on when you begin learning in more detail about longitude and latitude, you'll have a better understanding of it. All right. So how does a grid work? All right. Well, a grid usually gives you two sets of coordinates, numbers and letters for the most part. One set will tell you the horizontal location, like lines of latitude, and one set will tell you the vertical location, which are like lines of longitude. Okay, You did this probably in math in third and fourth grade. Uh, when you talked about a coordinate grid, you went over then up. Your fourth grade teacher may have taught you that. Uh, they should have. <clears throat> After teaching math for so many years, I do uh, have a strong recollection of what you learned in fifth and fourth grade math. So this is a lot like that. All right, so let's go ahead and practice as a whole group here, okay? So here I have the state of Utah and some cities in Utah, okay? There are several cities out here and the cities are designated by these dots, all right? So we are going to use this grid to find the grid location of these cities in Utah, okay? If I look here, one of them was done for us. Provo was done for us. Let's find Provo on this map. Here is Provo. This dot is in this square. So I want to know how many over and how many up do I go to find Provo? Well, if I take my pencil and I draw a line up, I find that I'm under the letter D. And if I go over to the number, I find that I'm on the number four. Okay. So that would tell me that I am at D4. Remember, we go over and then up. So I go over to D and down or up to 4. If the letters were down here on the bottom, I would do the same thing. On a coordinate grid in math, the numbers are on the bottom or the x-axis in the middle. So I'm used to saying over, then up. Okay, but it doesn't matter. We'll use the same strategy. All right, so let's go ahead and do some practice. Oh, and I should say again, I, I talked about lines of latitude and longitude. These letters represent these lines here, and these are long lines. So they are long, long lines of longitude, where these numbers are these lines which are like a rung on a ladder. So they represent lines of longitude. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the board. I'll leave Moab, the Bravo on there. So let's find Moab. Where is the Moab? Moab is right here. It is in this square. <clears throat> now I think I can highlight that square. It might make it a little easier um, to see. There's Moab right there in this square. Now, if I take my pin and I mark with my pin, I go up to the letter, which is letter F, and I go over to the number, I'm at number 7. So I say letter first, over F, down 7. So Moab is at F7. Okay, let's look at Cedar, Cedar City. Let's find Cedar City. Cedar City is here in this square. There's a dot. I will highlight it. Highlight Cedar City in this square. 
Now, if I use my pen and I go up to the letter, it's in letter B and over in number 8. So it is in B8. Okay, let's find St. George. St. George is in this square right here. And I should have outlined it first with my pen, I apologize. St. George is in this square. Well, I know it's number 9, obviously, and it's also in the first set here, so A. So it's in A9. I go over to A and down to 9. Most po one of probably the most popular city in Utah, which is Salt Lake City, which happens to be the home of the Utah Jazz NBA basketball team is in this square here. So to find Utah City or Salt Lake City, I go over to C and down to four. So it's C four over and down. Okay. And last but not least, we have Logan. The beautiful city of Logan. I've been to Logan. It's a very nice city. Logan is in this square. Now they try to trick you. They put the dot in this square, but the word was in the letter. So you've got to be careful. Pay attention to where the dot is. Logan is in this square right here. And if I use my pen, it's again, this one is also at C and over at 2. So it is C2. Oh, that makes some sense with all my drawing and sketching. All right. <clears throat> so now let's do some practice. My in-class on-site students will do this in shoulder partners. My virtual students feel free to get a parent or a friend, or you can just do it on your own. And then when you pause the video and you're ready to check your answers, hit play and you can check your answers. All right. But we're going to go ahead and practice what we just learned in finding these five cities in the state of Florida. Before we go, I'm going to do the example. The example is Orlando. Orlando is at H5. So if I go over to H and down five, one, two, three, four, five, I find Orlando. And Orlando is in this square, which is H5. All right, you go ahead and hit pause. Find the other five cities and we're ready to check your answers. Hit play. All right, welcome back. I hope you had some success. Let's go ahead and check your answers. Let's start with Pensacola. Pensacola is in this square. This square is at A3. Go up to A or over A down three. Key West, which happens to be way down here off the coast of Florida, will go over G, it's at G, and down 10. So Key West is at G10. Tallahassee, which is way up here, home of the Florida State Seminoles, is over E, and down, also down 3, so E3. Tampa. Tampa is in this square, home of the NFL, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is over F and down 6. So F6. And finally, Miami, or how they pronounce their city, Miami. It's very highly influenced by the Cuban community. Miami is over I and down 8. I hope you were successful in labeling the grid using this grid system. All right. So now on your own, you have an activity to do. You will be finding uh, my online students have an example. My virtual students have your own example. <clears throat> my on-site students have another example. So now that we know how a grid works and have practice, you will complete the cities of New York grid activity on your own and turn it into your pocket chart before the end of class for my on-site. My virtual students, you will click on the Google assignment, which is a similar practice, and it's a little bit different 
<clears throat> for you uh, so that it's an online assignment so it couldn't be as complicated. Uh, you will complete that and submit it. All right. So a little recap. A grid gives you two sets of coordinates, usually numbers and letters, to find a specific location on a grid map. Coordinates are usually set up as numbers, <clears throat> or coordinates are usually set up as numbers and uh, one set of letters. Uh, one is horizontal, like lines of latitude, and one is vertical, like lines of longitude. All right. Feel free to rewind, restart, review this video if you have questions. Uh, if you have any concerns or questions, come and see me during this, or your teacher during a Zoom meeting for my virtual students, uh, online or at site students. Feel free to raise your hand and ask us or come see us. All right. Have a wonderful afternoon. I hope you enjoyed your tour and I'll get better next time. Have a great day, guys.